With the release of The Dark Side of the Moon and Wish You Were Here, Pink Floyd were quickly becoming one of the biggest bands of the 1970s and fans were eager to hear what was next. But while the recording of Animals went relatively smoothly, irreparable cracks began to form in the relationship between bassist Roger Waters and the rest of the band. On today's program, we're going to explore what influenced the writing of the music, what really went on during recording, and how the iconic cover image was achieved. But before we dive into the making of the album, if you haven't already, take a moment and subscribe to the channel. It's a small thing that makes a big difference. All right, with all that said, let's find out how Pink Floyd made animals. On the 12th of September 1975, Pink Floyd released Wish You Were Here, their wildly successful follow-up to their international breakout record, The Dark Side of the Moon. After performing nearly 190 shows between 1972 and 1975, the band took a much-needed break. In fact, they didn't play a single show for the entirety of 1976, breaking their trend of playing live at least once a year since their inception as a band. Instead, their focus turned to recording their next album. Under their original contract with EMI, in exchange for unlimited studio time at Abbey Road, the band took a reduced percentage of their album sales. But that agreement expired with the release of Wish You Were Here, and they were concerned they were going to incur a lot of studio expenses going forward because of their tendency to take their time while recording. In an effort to mitigate recording costs as well as have a place to store all of their ever-growing touring equipment, they decided to build their own recording studio. In 1975, Pink Floyd bought a three-story building on Britannia Row, just north of the heart of London. The 24-track recording studio occupied the ground floor, whereas the second floor was dedicated to storing all of their tour equipment, and the top housed their offices and a billiards table. There was also the idea that if they built a really nice studio, they could rent it out to other bands and artists and thus have another source of income. The same went for renting out their live sound and lighting equipment, which was also a way of keeping their road crew employed between tours. The studio was designed by Roger, drummer Nick Mason, and their college friend John Corp. Their intention was to make it simple and easy to use so that any member of Pink Floyd could record on their own without the need of an engineer or a tape operator. It was as close to plug and play as you could get in the mid-1970s. The studio took almost all of 1975 to build, but by April of 76, it was ready to record Animals. Engineer Brian Humphreys returned from the Wish You Were Here sessions, and Nick Mason recalls that the album came together relatively simply. It was far less technically complex than their previous two records, however, unlike those efforts, there wasn't that collaborative feeling in the studio. It felt more like the band was simply a vehicle for Roger's creative ideas. In fact, throughout recording, Roger was the de facto leader and wrote all but one of the songs. According to Nick Mason, the general mood for the Animal Sessions was in better spirits than a recording for Wish You Were Here, which was plagued by tedious multi-tracking and the added pressure of it being the follow-up to Dark Side. However, during this time, Roger started taking more and more control over the band, both in songwriting and in direction. According to keyboardist Richard Wright, Roger believed that he was the sole force keeping the band together and moving forward, and thus he developed a bit of an ego. But to Roger's credit, he really Really was the only one bringing in new material. David has admitted he was never a fast songwriter, but during recording he was also busy being a new father to his first child. Nick didn't often write songs, so there wasn't the expectation on his end, but for Richard, something was different. After receiving multiple writing credits on their previous two records, he received none on Animals. He would later admit he didn't fight to put any of his own music on the album, but he also didn't have anything to contribute as he was distracted by his failing marriage. Not to mention, Richard was never one to assert himself in the band and ended up taking the brunt of Roger's growing ego. This behavior would eventually escalate in just a few years with Roger effectively kicking Richard out of the band during the recording of The Wall. Outside their studio, the world was changing too. The post-war economic boom in the UK was waning, and with growing economic uncertainty came high unemployment and inflation. Racial tensions were also rising, and the political divide was growing larger. To make matters worse, 
The summer of 76 was one of the hottest and driest on record, causing England to ration water for the first time. Attitudes towards prog rock bands like Pink Floyd were changing too. There was an increasing criticism that their money and age put them out of touch with current events and that rock music should be made by younger bands who are willing to take greater musical risks. For all of the Floyd's extravagant live shows and introspective atmospheric songs, there was a burgeoning movement to strip all that away and play simple, aggressive music. This became known as the punk movement and it carried with it an ethos to question authority. There was also an overall DIY approach to everything, from clothing to making music. You didn't need to be a guitar virtuoso to play. Three chords were all you needed as the feeling and the message in the music were more important. Bands like The Damned, the Clash and Buzzcocks all formed in 1976 with the Sex Pistols leading the way in 1975. These bands and more expressed the anger and frustration of young people growing up in a time with limited opportunity and with leaders that seemed to ignore them. Bands like Genesis, ELP, Yes and Pink Floyd embodied what the punk bands were against and seem out of touch with reality. This was most evident by the Sex Pistols and their I Hate Pink Floyd t-shirt. From the outside, the Floyd came off as elitist and part of the establishment. I think Captain Sensible said it best when he described the dam's relationship recording music for pleasure with Nick Mason as producer. Despite the outward disdain given to them by the punk movement, Pink Floyd didn't seem to be bothered by it. For Roger though, as much as he didn't care for the punk attitude or music, he couldn't help but be influenced by the same social unrest as they did. He felt the need to express it through music and so about halfway through recording, Roger decided to turn animals into a concept record. Basing it on an idea he had for a while, the concept revolved around the notion that modern society was in decay and capitalism was to blame. Roger likened the current human condition to that of animals. Borrowing themes from George Orwell's 1945 book Animal Farm, Roger envisioned a future where the human race was divided into three types of animals. The largest group were the common folk, the followers, and they were called the sheep. The next group were the industrious, business-minded overachievers known as the dogs. And finally, we have the corrupt leaders and rule makers, which were known as the pigs. Each song, save for the opening and closing track, examines these classes and criticizes them. Two of the songs for the new record were already written and performed by the band on the previous 1974-75 tour. In fact, they considered putting them on Wish You Were Here at one point. Dogs was originally titled You Gotta Be Crazy and Sheep was known as Raving and Drooling. According to David, both songs were already recorded for animals by the time Roger presented the new concept and so they reworked the lyrics to better reflect the themes of the concept. By and large, both songs are very similar in structure to their live versions. However, Dogs had its key change to better fit David and Roger's vocal ranges. Pigs, Three Different Ones was a new song written by Roger specifically for the album and featured the band's first use of a talk box effects pedal. Roger provided the vocals and acoustic guitar while David had double duty of playing both guitar and bass. One of the last songs recorded was Pigs on a Wing and it was added as a way to give the album some sense of hope. It was written as a love song for Roger's new wife, Lady Carolyn Christie. In fact, it was the first overt love song to appear on a Pink Floyd record. It was originally recorded as one song but was broken into two parts as an effort to give the album a better flow and to reinforce the animal theme. But this song also proved to be a point of contention between Roger and David. Under the band's agreement, additional album sale royalties were paid to the writer or writers of each song. David felt this was becoming unfair in the wake of Animals since he only shared co-writing credit on one song. He estimated he wrote 90% of Dogs, which is a 17 minute song, whereas Roger got double credit for Pigs on a Wing, which is really two halves of the same song that barely adds up to three minutes of music. Unfortunately, there wasn't much David could do about it because that was the agreement. However, this became one of the many cracks in their relationship that would only grow larger in the next few years. As the album came together, it was becoming clear that their overall sound was more harrowing, bitter, and with an edge. 
Part of this was due to David implementing a big muff guitar pedal into his playing for the first time on an album. Nick felt that another reason for the change was their overall workmanlike attitude during recording. Because of the small space of their studio, there wasn't a lot of room for people to hang out in their control room, so recording was more about getting the tracks down on tape rather than hanging out. Nick also mused that the change in sound could have been their subconscious reaction to the punk movement that saw acts like them as dinosaurs. It was their way of saying us dinosaurs still have something to say. Richard later said that he didn't really like most of the music on the album, but thought he played well. David thought it was just as good as their last two records, but ultimately felt it was not one of their creative high points. Roger summed up the music as violence tempered with sadness. While recording for the album was nearing completion, plans for the upcoming tour were just beginning. They needed a few supporting musicians to help recreate the studio sound in a live environment. Sax player Dick Perry returned to help out on keys and play his parts from Wish You Were Here, but they still needed another guitarist slash bassist. At the recommendation of their manager Steve O'Work, musician Snowy White was invited to meet the band at Britannia Row. Snowy met with David who explained what they needed for the upcoming tour and offered Snowy the job. Snowy then asked if he could play a little with the band, to which David responded, well, you wouldn't be here if you couldn't play, would you? And with that, Snowy was hired. On his way out, he found Roger and Nick in a bit of a frantic state as they had just accidentally erased David's guitar solo for Pigs on a Wing. Roger then asked Snowy to record a replacement solo, which he did. While his contributions didn't make it onto the final vinyl release, those who bought the 8-track version got to hear Snowy's solo as a bridge between parts 1 and 2 of Pigs on a Wing as they were combined into one song due to limitations of the 8-track format. <laughs> Snowy would go on to play with Pink Floyd on the Wall Tour and then later with Roger Waters for his solo tours. By December of 1976, the album was complete and the focus was moved to the cover art. Once again, they enlisted the aid of design team Hypnosis, who up to this point had designed all of their album covers since A Saucer Full of Secrets. Hypnosis presented some different concepts to the band, one of which included a little boy walking in on his parents going at it like animals. But none of them were appealing. Instead, Roger came up with the idea of photographing the Battersea power station with a giant pig floating above it. Hypnosis tried to convince Roger that they didn't need to actually float a pig above the power station as it could be photographed anywhere and then superimposed above Battersea. But Roger already had plans to include a giant pig for their upcoming tour and insisted they do it for real. Event Structure Research Group designed a 30 foot long by 20 foot high pig which was constructed by a German company that had previously made the original Zeppelins. Aubrey Powell and Storm Thorgensen of Hypnosis put together a film crew along with roughly 14 still photographers and a helicopter to capture the pig floating above the power station. A marksman was also hired to shoot the pig in case it broke free. The first day of the photo shoot commenced on December 2nd, 1976, but algae, as the pig was now named, refused to inflate. The crew made the most of it by taking pictures of the power station anyway, including details of the surrounding area that would eventually be used for the album Gatefold, as well as the tour program, songbook, and other publicity materials. The following day, Algae was successfully inflated, but Pink Floyd's manager, Steve O'Work, failed to rehire the marksman for this day, and of course, the pig broke free and floated out of view. It passed by Heathrow Airport, causing havoc with flights being delayed or rerouted, and it was reportedly seen by a passing jet. Algae eventually deflated and crashed onto a farm in Kent. News of the chaos made the papers, giving the band a bunch of free publicity for their upcoming album. The third and final attempt was made the next day, this time with two marksmen and everything went according to plan. Unfortunately though, the photos from this day captured the power station against clear blue skies and this wasn't as striking as the ones from the first day. So Hypnosis cut out the floating pig and added it to their preferred photo of the station, exactly what they wanted to do in the first place. Animals was released in the UK on the 21st or the 23rd of January 1977 and and later on February 12th in the US. Some critics loved the album, but others did not like the harder, more cynical Pink Floyd sound. 
Regardless, the record went on to be a commercial success, reaching number two on the UK charts and number three in the US. It has since gone on to be revered as one of the big four classic Pink Floyd albums that dominated the 1970s. For the band though, things were never the same. The collaborative experience of their past was gone and now Roger was in charge and things were about to get much worse on their upcoming tour. All right, everyone, that will do it for today. Be sure to join me for part two as I dive into the supporting tour and how it shaped their next album, The Wall. Until then, I want to thank you all so much for watching. I am your Vinyl Geek, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Hey everyone, thanks again for watching. Be sure to check out my other Pink Floyd content, including the story of how the wall was built.